Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Aaron. I'm a junior doctor working in London. And on the side, I put out some medical education content onto YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter, which I found useful when I was studying, and hopefully it's of some use to you guys. So as the title suggests, in this video, we're gonna be covering bronchiectasis, one of the really common cases that could come up in your respiratory OSCE. We're gonna go over the examination findings, how to present these findings clearly, and also how to answer your typical Viva questions. And all of this is by using the retrospective approach to preparing for OSCEs, which I've talked about in previous videos. So go check them out. But for now, let's jump straight into it. So here are the positive findings from this case. Peripherally, we can see that this patient has digital clubbing, and also we can see a sputum pot by the bedside, which has some thick green sputum. When focusing on the chest, on palpation, there's reduced chest expansion bilaterally. And on auscultation, we think we can hear coarse crackles in the lower zones that clear on coughing. So the clubbing in combination with these coarse crackles, as well as that sputum pot with that thick green sputum, is all very classic for bronchiectasis. And the first question you're most likely to get asked after you finish your examination routine is to present your examination findings. And we always try to use the same structure where we start with an introductory sentence, our positive findings, our relevant negative findings, and then our summary. So in this case, I performed a respiratory examination on this patient who has signs suggestive of a bronchiectasis. My main positive findings are on general inspection, I noticed a sputum pot with thick green sputum by the bedside. Preferably, this patient has signs of digital clubbing. And centrally, there was reduced chest expansion bilaterally. And on auscultation, I could hear coarse crackles in the low zones that clear on coughing. My relevant negative findings are reassuringly, this patient is not requiring oxygen there's no CO2 retention flap, and there's no signs of decompensation such as core pulmonale. So this points towards bronchiectasis. The cause of the bronchiectasis is unclear. The absence of any signs of rheumatoid arthritis, such as rheumatoid nodules or a swan neck deformity, make rheumatoid an unlikely cause of the bronchiectasis. I'd also like to look for signs of cystic fibrosis, such as nasal polyps, and signs of immunodeficiency, such as splenomegaly, to help look for other possible causes of bronchiectasis. The next question they could ask you is on the possible causes of bronchiectasis. So you could answer this by saying, the most common cause of bronchiectasis would be post-infection, such as TB or bacterial pneumonia. There'd also be other causes linked to connective tissue diseases, such as rheumatoid arthritis or systemic sclerosis. Congenital causes of bronchiectasis include cystic fibrosis and Cartagena syndrome. And another possible cause for bronchiectasis would be immunodeficiency, so for example, HIV. A very standard question they could throw at you would be, how would you investigate this patient? And you'll see here that almost all these investigations are easily reproducible for any respiratory OSCE case. And once again, we're classifying into bedside, blood tests, imaging, and special tests. So I'd like to investigate this patient by starting with some bedside tests. I'd like to start with a peak flow, which I'd expect to be reduced in this case. I'd also like to do a sputum MCNS to look for any signs of superimposed infection. So I'd like to move on to some blood tests next. I'd like to start with a full blood count to help for look for signs of anemia of chronic disease. I'd then do some blood tests to look for specific markers to help identify the cause of the bronchiectasis, such as rheumatoid factor and anti-CCP for rheumatoid arthritis. I'd then move on to some imaging. So I'd like to start with a basic chest X-ray, particularly looking for tram lines and ring shadows which are two specific signs of bronchiectasis. And the diagnostic test for bronchiectasis would be a CT chest, where I'd look for thick dilated bronchioles. I'd then like to finish with some special tests. So for example, spirometry, where the most common finding would be an obstructive pattern or a mixed pattern with bronchiectasis. I'd also like to do ciliary function testing, which would be impaired in Cartagena syndrome, and also a specific test for cystic fibrosis. So for example, the sweat test or CF genotyping. And then moving on to how would you manage this patient? And once again, trying to classify. So I'd like to use a conservative approach to start with. So this would be an MDT approach involving the GP, the respiratory team, as well as the physios to help with chest physio. I'd like to encourage smoking cessation if the patient is still a smoker. And then on to medical management, and this would involve antibiotics to treat any exacerbations. Okay, so that brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you found it useful. If you did find that helpful, then please give this video a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel. But for now, thanks for watching, guys. Have a good night, and I'll see you in the next video.